Okay, I was about to start the humming hold music for everyone, but <laughs> alas. All right, I am Mary Gardner. Uh, I am co founder and director of operations of a relatively new nonprofit, a uh, US based nonprofit, the Ada Initiative, founded in January 2011. Um, little postcard in your pack as well. Um, <clears throat> So our mission statement is supporting women in open technology and culture and basically I'm going to tell you tonight a little bit about what that means, uh, what our history is and where we're going from here. So open technology and culture um, is what we've tried to turn a fairly short phrase from everything from Wikipedia at the start through to open social networking at the end with a little bit of fandom in the middle open mapping, creative commons, transformative works fandom um, is the term they use now for people who are in the fandom of television shows and movies, uh, maker culture, open education. Um, so just out of curiosity, who in this room would regard themselves as part of open technology and culture in one of these kind of areas? People who've edited Wikipedia, who use open source, Okay, running at maybe a third of the room. Hey, people who know what at least one of these things is, at least one. Yeah, okay. Always good to know that you don't have to start explaining open source from the beginning. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about um, uh, a advisor of ours, Kiralee Robert, um, Scud, some of you probably know, um, calls this open stuff, but we couldn't use open stuff in a mission statement for the um, internal review service, so open technology and culture it is. Um, so we're talking about women's participation in all of these things, uh, probably starting with open source because famously women have pretty low participation in open source, but we'll find also that not universally across these things, but it's like most of geekdom, women are not highly represented in open technology and culture. And there are structural barriers um, and women's history involved in that. Uh, so our mission statement is, to, is twofold. We're talking about increasing women's numbers numerically, but also increasing the friendliness of the environment to women. Um, so more than just exhorting women to do this stuff because it's cool, uh, telling these communities that they need to be more friendly to women and more open to women participating because women are cool. Okay, so who we are. Um, so we are not Ada Loveless. This is the Countess of Loveless. Many people will recognize her. Um, we are, of course, named after her. She died aged 36 of ovarian cancer nearly 200 years ago. Um, she is, we think of her as the first open source programmer because uh, she um, publicly wrote down algorithms for the analytical engine. She's also probably the first programmer, full stop. Um, this is a portrait here by Colin Adams, who's a friend of one of our founders. Uh, we've released this new portrait of Ada um, into the public domain, if anybody is interested in Ada Loveless remixes. Okay, that's the Countess of Loveless. Now, who are we? Uh, on the left, we have Valerie Aurora, who uh, some people who follow Linux might know better as Valerie Henson, who, which was her former name. Uh, she was for 10 years a Linux kernel developer specializing in file systems. Uh, on the right, we have me. Um, I am, I suppose you might say, a geek of all trades, but less kindly, you might say, a computing PhD student. Um, Valerie and I together have been involved in uh, both in open source development um, and also in advocating for women in open source in particular for about 10 years now, mostly in the Linux Chicks organization. Uh, we've been working, talking closely to each other for about five years. Uh, we both happened to come to a point in our lives, um, both due to external and internal forces, where we thought, okay, this time we're really going to do something about it. And what we're going to do is the Ada Initiative. Okay, so what are, why are we doing this? Um, people, some people will have seen these statistics. Um, in 2002, one of the, one of the best, um, in terms of research methods, one of the best studies of uh, the open source culture for women's participation measured about a 1.5% contribution rate from women, as in, um, in terms of headcount, that of open source contributors, about 1.5% of them are women. 
Um, there's similar numbers coming out of other surveys with varyingly good methodology. So an Ubuntu community census had 2.4% women in 2006. The Pearl community seems to have about 3% women. Um, Ubuntu members, which is a formal process, currently comprise slightly less than 5% women. Uh, this compares with industry numbers of probably in the United States around about 25% of IT professionals are women. Um, okay, so that's kind of what it looks like pictorially, taking I guess one of the more aggressive numbers we have, rounding 1.5% up to a whole two women in this picture of 100 people. Um, that's what open source development looked like in 2002. Uh, broadly speaking, those numbers roughly are reflected in open source conferences even today. Okay, so we said open and technology and culture in general rather than open source in particular. Um, even this year, about 13% of Wikipedia contributions appear to have been made by women. That is higher than open source, but it's not 51% by a long way. Okay, so the obvious question is, and, and this gets asked a lot when you talk to people about this, like, does it matter? Um, this is a picture of the Ubuntu Developer Summit earlier this year. A uh, little bit hard to see, but you get a sense of the demographic of Ubuntu developers. They're largely men, um, they're largely young, they're largely white people. Um, does that matter? So it matters in two senses. One of them is that uh, Open technology and open culture is changing the world. Um, and it will change the world better the more people are involved in it and the more it reflects the community demographic. So in order to serve the needs of women uh, or of people who aren't young, white and male, it helps to have those people involved. Secondly, uh, open technology and culture is changing the world. And that means that it's a really good place to be in some respects. It's a good career. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's somewhere that you really have a chance to make a difference uh, and women aren't involved. So that means that women are missing out on this particular chance to make a difference. Okay. So uh, people who've been around this area probably know that we're, you know, the Ada Initiative is not the first people to say by a long way to say, hey, there don't seem to be a lot of women around in open technology and culture, quite the reverse. Um, there's been Linux chicks, uh, the penguin up the top left from uh, 1999 onwards. Um, Debian Women, I think, was founded in 2003. Um, we've got the Ubuntu Women logo. I think they've been around since 2005 or so. Drupal chicks down the bottom left. Dev chicks, which is a more general group for women programmers. Um, yeah, so there have been people doing this. Uh, so why the Ada Initiative? Why do a new thing, why not, um, uh, why not wait for the work that these groups are doing um, to be successful? Okay, um, so basically, uh, I guess to put it boldly, one of the ways that the Ada Initiative is different is that we intend to do this um, and be paid for it. We, Valerie and I, are trying to raise money to work on this full time. Um, what tends to happen with all of, almost all of these groups uh, at the moment um, is that they're run by volunteers, which is great. Um, they do a lot of good things. They're limited by burnout and people's spare time and people having babies um, and people having lives in the way that volunteer groups are. Um, so we're hoping that by declaring that we want to be paid to do this full time, that we'll be able to make a disproportionate amount of difference simply by having time. Uh, another aspect of this, of the volunteering, um, the volunteering nature of previous work on, in women in open source particularly, um, is that people burn out on it pretty quickly. So it's not just, like, it's not just a question of, um, of encouraging people and people being receptive to the message and not knowing what to do. There's actually a great deal of hostility to the idea that there should be any active methods to increase women's participation in technology in general or in open technology and culture in particular. Uh, so there's a really strong history. Uh, in fact, Valerie's been through it at least once. Um, more recently, Kiralee Robert, who gave a keynote at OzCon 
in the United States in 2009 and then went on to give four keynotes in a year explaining that yes, there really are a lot of women in open source. Um, uh, basically succumbed to online, to vicious online trolling, um, to the point where uh, Kiralee is leaving the um, coding industry entirely uh, for the music career, um, a music tech career, which is cool, but we really don't want this anymore to have to be the kind of thing where a small number of women put their entire lives on the line having fights on the internet that date back to 1960 about how women shouldn't be sexually harassed at conferences anymore. Um, <clears throat> and then a year later, find that they have absolutely no energy for this anymore and run off in, in, into an entirely new career where nobody knows their name. Um, and they hope they never have to hear the words open technology ever again. Okay, so the kind of stuff we're thinking of doing, therefore, is a little bit different from the kind of thing that Linux chicks and Drupal chicks and Wiki chicks um, <coughs> and Ubuntu women and Debian women and so on have done in the past, uh, which is largely creating a network for women to meet each other, which is really great. Uh, you know, here we are at a, a network for women to meet each other. Uh, it's a crucial part of the um, crucial part of the battle, if you like, to get women more involved in this, but. It's only part of it, uh, and the reason that volunteer groups tend to focus on that is that it's less battley um, to create a women's group and say, women come here, we'll talk among ourselves, uh, we'll get to know each other, uh, we won't get trolled constantly because we'll be creating our own safer space. Um, that absolutely needs to be done. Uh, but what the Ada Initiative is hoping we have the energy to do is to reach out to the wider culture, uh, especially to the areas of the culture who are starting to agree that they have a gender representation problem, um, and to help them out. So the idea is basically that we will be offering free services to conferences, to um, corporations who work on open technology in particular and open culture in general. Uh, so we're talking about doing that for free. Um, with funded sponsorship so that uh, we'll apply the model that we receive donations from people who, from organizations who've made a lot of money from open technology and culture, and we'll use that money to give advice where it is most obviously needed and wanted. Um, so there's straightforward consulting on policies and culture. Um, in particular, one success we've had already that happened uh, even prior to the formal creation of the organization is um, the creation of an anti-harassment policy since in open source people might or might not have heard, but it's becoming increasingly well known that women are experiencing sexual harassment and assault a lot at open source conferences. Um, possibly there are open source conferences that don't want me to say that in case women stop going, um, but our argument is that Rather than keep that quiet, we're hoping to put policies in place that will make these really basic expectations of safety an uh, integral part of the conference experience. So um, our anti-harassment policy has already been pretty widely adopted by open source conferences, including uh, Linux ConfAU and the Open Source Developers Conference in Australia um, and the OS Bridge Conference in, um, uh, in the United States and is being rolled out across more conferences now. Um, we're talking about, uh, we call it Ada Camp at the moment, but the idea is that there are heaps of people working in open technology and culture, working to make women more welcome and um, women more active, and that they're not really talking to each other, that they're talking to people inside Ubuntu, they're talking to people inside Debian, they're talking to people inside Linux. Um, for a, one of the first times, we'd really like to get those people together in various countries um, and develop programs with them. Uh, there's definitely a need even for basic research. Um, so as I said, the really good number on women's participation in open source dates from 2002. Um, Wikipedia has a much more recent number for their community. Um, but when people come and they say, okay, what's the size of this problem? Uh, at the moment, it's actually hard to point at concrete numbers. Uh, and we'd also like to examine the effect of programs on women. Uh, and another example of what we're proposing to do is training and mentoring programs. Again, uh, we're hoping to develop these and make them publicly available uh, in the Creative Commons sense um, so that they can spread way out beyond the ADA initiative. 
uh, examples of what we've already an example of what we've already done is Valerie's ally training workshops, where <coughs> she uh, helps interested men to um, to understand how they can react when they see anti-women sentiment expressed in their communities. Another program we're talking about doing. Uh, when we have our funding secure is a program called First Patch Week, um, which is based on a process inside the Ubuntu community called the Patch Pilot. Uh, the idea being that when you contribute to an open technology thing, there are, is often a whole lot of um, technical structure that you need to understand. You need to understand bug trackers. You need to understand source control. You need to understand who to propose a patch to and how to persuade people on IRC to merge that patch. Um, the idea is to take a bunch of women and get them to all the way through that process on a fairly major open source project um, through to submitting their first patch. Uh, our aim uh, at the moment is women, uh, we say women in early to mid career, so women in their final years of university through to uh, say their first 10 years in the tech industry um, or in related industries, helping them get involved in um, open technology and open culture. Okay, uh, so we already have um, a little bit of support from the community. Um, we are pleased to announce uh, several months ago now Linux Australia, which is the um, Linux, uh, the peak Linux body in Australia, became our first sponsor. Uh, shortly joined by Puppet Labs, who are a, a US software firm, and DreamHost, a US hosting provider. Very recently, Google became our first sponsor at the venture philanthropist level, which is the new um, introductory sponsorship level. Uh, more importantly, uh, it's just finished in the last few days, we reached out to the community, particularly in the United States, and we said um, people who want to help out in a financial sense, the type of people who've been coming to people like myself and Valerie and Kiralee Robert for years and saying, I want to do something about this, but I can't figure out what to do. We raised a fund. Uh, we organized a fundraising campaign uh, aimed at them. We raised just over $80,000 from 103 donors. 103 because we didn't, didn't shut down the donation button in time. Um, so what we're doing here is trying to demonstrate support so that we can have larger sponsors come on board um, in order to fund us to work on this um, in, a, in a more full-time way. Presently, Valerie and I are both volunteers um, during the, as essentially the startup phase in the way that a business might have a startup phase. Okay, so if you're interested in helping out, uh, the first thing to do um, if you're interested in staying in contact with us or eventually volunteering for us or contributing to our program <laughs> development or asking us to work with your community um, is simply to get in touch. We have a mailing list for active supporters. We have the usual announcement lists uh, for other folks. Um, if you're interested in following us on Twitter, um, I didn't realize how tweety this evening would be foolishly. We're just at Ada Initiative. Okay. Um, if you, uh, for organizations in particular, um, if you're interested in becoming a sponsor, uh, we are seeking sponsorship at the moment. Uh, and finally, uh, if you're interested in simply following what we're doing or you have any questions or you want to follow our news, uh, we have a blog at adarinitiative.org. You can email us anytime at contact at adarinitiative.org. And yes, you can follow us on Twitter um, as simply at adarinitiative. All right. Thanks very much for that. Uh, and I'm happy to take any questions if, if people are interested in more information. Just going to go back up and put our nice picture of Ada Lovelace. There we go. So, so one quick thing. Um, yep. Do you have to repeat any questions that I'll ask you in order for it to be had on the live Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll be repeating questions back for the benefit of our online audience. So do, do people have live questions? Please stand up if you have a question. Hi. Great talk.
Hello. This one works. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Great talk. Thank you. Um, quick question. How are you linked with the ADA initiative in the US? Are you the one organization, or how, how is the ADA initiative structured? Structured. Uh, yes, so we're a United States organization. We're a 501c3 in there, which is the charity status in the US. Um, and I'm going to be paid out of the US organization. Uh, I have a lot of very uninteresting opinions and knowledge now about international US tax law that I won't share with you. But yes, I, I mean, I'm, the short answer is I'm an employee of the US organization. Uh, what's the type of volunteer work that are available or are expected? At present, the, so the question is, what's the type of volunteer work that's available? Um, at present, mostly what we're going to be looking for in, say, the next three or four months is feedback on our program. So for everything I listed there in the consulting section, uh, we need to flesh them out, um, which is the aim for the rest of the year, essentially, is to come up with you know, multiple page prospectuses and plans for these projects and to build contacts. So the largest volunteering in the medium term is joining our supporters mailing list where we'll be sending drafts of that sort of thing, soliciting ideas, finding out about new communities that we haven't even heard of and women in them already, which we haven't, who we haven't heard of. Um, because we'd really like to have programs that actually work, that actually make sense to as many people and particularly women, but not only women, as possible. So that's the medium term. Uh, in the longer term, I think the main volunteering will be things like taking our allies training workshop and actually giving it at conferences and things like that. Um, but we won't have developed the materials in the next few months. Uh, but yeah, that's the longer term plan. This might, this, this might be a really difficult question to answer in a kind of quick way, but why do you think this is? I mean, why do you think that, uh, that there's such a gender divide still in the industry? The question is, why do I, why do I think there is the gender divide um, in the tech industry in general or in open tech and culture particularly? Or <sighs> um, So thinking about, I guess, talking about the gender, the gender differences between the tech industry in general and open tech and culture in particular, um, it's a bit, I don't actually know what I would say is the primary reason, but there's sort of a huge kettle of factors involved. Um, one of them is that socially it's harder for women to be geeks. Uh, a lot of this is spare time stuff, at least when you're ramping up. Um, you're expected to have done a bit of volunteering in the community, volunteer conference presentations, volunteer coding, that sort of thing. Um, spending time on that kind of stuff is something that girls and women are penalised more heavily for, both because we don't get our other work done and because um, our parents don't necessarily like it all that much. Did anyone else have my experience as a kid where your parents were like, stop mucking around with that computer? No. You've broken the computer. My sister's looking at me like, you did break the computer. <sighs> um, I don't have any brothers, so I can't say what my parents would have done with brothers, but there's a, there's a lot of that in a lot of women's past. Um, I mean, there's, there's the overt nasty stuff of harassment um, that has been increasingly coming to light uh, as women feel slightly more comfortable talking about it. Um, there have been conferences in Australia um, in the last sort of four or five years where something has happened and women are like, well, you know, I could have done something else with this week other than look at some man's porn collection kind of thing. So there's, there's, quite, there's still some quite overt if not anti-women, explicitly anti-women stuff, then um, you know, pro-men, men only kind of signs. So there's a little bit of that. Um, there is the general tech industry stuff that right through school and right through university, there are less women who start mathematics and science and computing and the women who are in there drop out faster. Um, so that's definitely a real problem as well. Um, just people tend to move into, people often, I, th um, I don't have the citations to mind, but people really do seek out role models who resemble them as closely as they can possibly find. So women enter these communities and they find people who, I mean, 
many of us in this room have stuck around, but you find people there who aren't like you in that they're not women. Um, and that's just one, you know, one little sign saying, mm, maybe this is not quite the exact friendliest place in the world for you. Uh, so, yeah, it's a bit, I wouldn't be able to identify which of those is the primary factor, but there are a bunch. Um, and most of our activities, I think, will be focused around removing the really more overt, this is a men's space kind of signals, letting people know that that, that is a problem, because a lot of people in these communities don't necessarily think that's a problem, um, that they don't realise what messages that having porn in your tech talk sends to some of the women in the audience and even a number of men in the audience as well. Um, so yeah, our actual direction mostly, at least initially, is getting rid of some of the more overt signaling saying this is not really a, women, a woman's place. Um, going off the back of what you were just talking about, uh, a couple bloggers that I've read in the last few months have said that the reason there aren't more women in IT is because they're not, pardon my French, assholes. Um, that that is somehow an intrinsic trait that you need to succeed in that field. And I found myself that in, you know, in the times when I've gotten along with my male coworkers, it's because I've become one of the boys. Mm -hmm. And do you, I mean, the Ada Initiative, is it about advocating I, I, I'm guessing not, that we fit into that role or whether we try and change it so that we don't have to be like that. Right. Uh, so uh, for the benefit of the stream, the question is, do, uh, are we trying to help women fit into the existing, arguably, asshole culture or <laughs> to change the culture? Uh, and our goal is the much harder one, to change the culture. It's really, really, it's, it's a very difficult thing with any culture to say, you know, you, uh, peop because people will be there um, because they enjoy it. And it's important to note carefully that, I mean, I certainly enjoy a lot of aspects of geek culture as well. I'm still here. Um, and there's always some concern. Some of, it is ho some of it is masked hostility to women and some of it is genuine concern that if women come in in great numbers that the community will lose much of its charm. Um, so we're not trying to de-charm the geek community. Charm. <laughs> well. Yeah, I, th I think it's. Most of these guys have been in a situation in all of their lives where they are not real men. Right. And now they've got a situation, a place where there were guys just like them, mm -hmm. and they've got a strong male culture that is different. Yep. And now all these women are coming in, and suddenly they've got to be. Um, and now they don't know how to handle that. There's their entire what they love is under threat. Right. Now the fact that they're complete horrors, yeah, okay, but <laughs> yeah, it's reasonable for them to fear that. And if you just laugh at them, you're not going to get mm -hmm. anywhere. Yeah, I, I agree that. Um, so uh, for for the benefit of the internet, the the point is that get, like largely men have created geek culture. Um, because they don't fit into mainstream models of being a man either, uh, and they've created a safe place for themselves. Um, so you have the challenge of preserving that, um, or um, but you know, like expanding it in a way that it is more welcome to general diversity, but not turning it into something that is identical to mainstream culture, um, which again is so. So yeah, we're attempting this really hard problem of identifying what it is about the lack of diversity that can be changed without necessarily saying, okay, this needs to become, um, you know, uh, this needs to become everyday normal culture with, with its own problems. I mean, mainstream culture as opposed to geek culture is, you know, in some ways less desirable than geek culture. Um, so yeah, so yeah, but there's, so the answer to the original question is uh, we're hoping to change the culture rather than change women. There's a there's a little bit of practical changing women sort of negotiation skills that you need and that sort of thing that we'd like to help people with, um, but we think that the answer is not telling women to become as much like their male colleagues as they can, even to the point of denying who they are, um, which is advice that is not unheard of 
in the women in tech um, space. All right. Hi there. We had at least one more question. That was me. Yes. Yeah. Um, the what you're talking about with universities and schools. This is something I've actually heard from um, many podcasts where they've interviewed mm -hmm. women in design and the web um, project managers like myself. You know, what is it that you know we kind of fall into it? We've started somewhere else and then we kind of fall into it. And when you talk to developers, it, they've actually had to really stick at it, like you've said. They've actually had to beaten themselves up. What is your approach to schools and universities? Will you be speaking to lecturers and? helping them to not, you know, to realise there are women there and they need to be nurtured, talking to schools in their mathematics and scientific classes, is that part of what you're hoping to do as part of your initiative? Uh, the initiative, so the question is, are we going to be talking to schools and universities, um, particularly targeting lecturers and teachers there? Uh, the, so we, at the moment, we're hoping to focus more. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So there's quite, uh, there can probably be never, I'm, I'm not saying in, by any means that there's enough work on this. There's quite a lot of initiatives already that work with school age girls. Uh, so our, our work at the moment is going to be, um, I haven't actually been following the Twitter. <laughs> it's behind my head, it could be. Um, uh, so yeah, we're going to be trying to work with universities, um, in particular because that's a time when, for a lot of these things, that's a really key, um, uh, the phrase that open source sometimes uses is a larval phase, a really key time when people get to grips with the technology and get confident with it. Um, and certainly we don't want to say that women who've graduated from university are incapable of getting involved. We'll be working with them a lot as well. Um, but university aged women are a really key market for having the time um, to, to learn about these things and feel comfortable with them in time to get into them and actually start a career from the beginning rather than transition. So yeah, part of our aim will be working with universities. Uh, yep. oh, one more. So it have to be a last question. Do you think uh, women in corporate IT are somewhat sheltered from some of the issues that you've raised this evening or experienced them in you know a less less dramatic fashion are women in corporate IT sheltered from from some of the from some of the issues that are facing women in open tech and culture well so I have to kind of edge around this because I've never worked in corporate IT so um, <laughs> I yeah I'm, I'm not an expert on the the corporate woman's experience I guess um, I think that certainly some of the stuff that comes from being in a really extreme, you know, one or two percent or five percent kind of minority is less in some corporate IT. I mean, there are certainly corporate IT shops that have those numbers as well. I'm not saying that they're all a, a utopia of high women of high female participation. Um, so yeah, I think a little bit of that. Also, corporate culture for all the, you know, geeks don't like it. Um, some respects of it. Corporate culture has stamped down, you know, um, over not not all corporate cultures. Some corporate cultures have kind of squashed down some of the really overt um, harassment, and and it's sort of a, it's something that the corporate world knows a little bit about. Um, whereas we're finding that open source conferences, for example, are only just now sort of finding out that uh, women aren't always flattered if you talk about their boobs. <laughs> um, uh, Whereas you know, I think uh, I've, I've you know I've heard bad things about some corporate subcultures too. Uh, uh, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that that the corporate world is the new utopia for women, but yeah, I think there's there's um, some shock at encountering this thing where you like, you know, I thought that went out in 1970 kind of thing. I yes. really have not struck things in the last few years that I struck when I first started. In co so um, you're saying you haven't struck stuff in the last 20 years, well, in the the recently. Last few years when I started, yeah. Um, oh boy. It in was, you know, it was really yeah. serious. But now, yeah. if somebody goes that way, you just have to look at them and they know they've got it wrong. And what's more, the guys mm -hmm. will support you. I had one bloke who, was, who kept sort of saying, we're all blokes here, and uh, it was a vendor. Mm -hmm. 
being distinctly blokey about it. And um, at one point, I just sort of, he said something exceptionally sexist. I looked at him, all the boys looked at him. Mm -hmm. And he suddenly realized that he'd done something yeah. very stupid, but he did do it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think one of the things that gives us some optimism about pushing on this further as a, you know, um, is that, you know, like, like uh, um, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, to, to respond to that, yeah, so one of the things I think that's going to, that, that, gives us a little bit of optimism about what we're doing with the Adrian Initiative is that, yeah, stuff, ha like, things have worked a little bit. Um, we haven't seen 20 years, even in, in open source, of standing completely still on awareness of basic friendliness to women. So we're hoping, you know, that we can apply a little bit of force behind a, you know, push on something along that's already happening. Someone mentions on Twitter that um, they were originally uh, attracted to IT because I'm definitely more of a dude chick. I think that's... I think that's something important to, to think about. I mean, I'm not really dressed like a dude chick. Um, but there, like, a lot of us have the experience of getting along with men, or with geeky men more than we get along with, um, with non-geeky women. Um, so it's not that, uh, at least I, I hope I personally recognize that, you know, like, um, this is, a, this is a, a culture that's done good things for women who are here. It's not just sort of um, something that we need to change entirely. Um, yeah, all right. Yes, I'm being given gentle hints. To that, that <laughs> I, can hear, I can hear a stomach growling. <sighs> that's right. You can always talk to her at dinner. That, that is, you know, dinner conversation. It's one of those old pre-technology, pre-internet uh, pastimes. Don't um, tweet me. I haven't got a smartphone yet. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Get that woman an Android. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a PhD student. We, like we, yeah, we don't have that kind of money. <laughs> um, all right, everybody. So uh, just to say a couple of things. First of all, we are trending in Sydney on Twitter. So thank you for being as involved as you are. Um, the next thing I wanted to say is that we are going upstairs for dinner. So if we can do it in a, a slightly faster and more orderly fashion than we took to find our friends earlier, that would be fantastic. Please take your glass with you and it will be used at dinner. Afterwards, we will come back for some more talks. Going back here? Uh, well, I thought we were hurting people and there are signs outside. Okay. We are coming back, you can leave things here.
The cleaners will get it. Um, cool. Carson's got something on in here tomorrow with exactly the setup, so it's perfect. Okay. Yeah. So we should leave it set up like this. Leave it set up like this. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, we can Definitely. do that. Definitely. We can do that. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like convenient. Less fucking work. Yes, so we're just going to have to clean up this piece. Hopefully the cleaners will be able to do it. Um, someone else has got a function in tomorrow morning, which is exactly the same setup, so same number of people too. Awesome. 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 Awesome.